day. Well, as we've said so many times, the Daytona 500 is where the magic happens, and it is also where dreams come true. But as Kenny Wallace says, for a boy who started out in St. Louis, Missouri, it's also where dreams can die. Let's take a look as Kenny Wallace tries to qualify and make the field for his 11th Daytona 500. This is the day that I've been waiting for my whole life, but honestly, I cannot wait for this day to be over. The duels should be completely illegal because they are a complete drama for somebody like me. Trevor Bain's biggest fan right now is Kenny Wallace. If Bain races his way into the 500, that opens up a place in the big race for Kenny Wallace. Usually I'll, I'll watch a race just all comfortable. I'm tore up watching this race. A big crash in turn number one. Where's Trevor? Holy, oh my God, look at this. Oh my God. I just got to make sure it's by wreck. When Robbie Gordon gets a hell of a run, you know. Tony Stewart, Kevin Harvick, white flag this time by. Please don't tell me Robbie Gordon's up there. Please no. Oh, man, no. Please no. Oh, my god. The race is over. That's uh, Tony Stewart will win the race. I didn't make it. An off season of preparation has led to this moment. 150 miles are all that stand between Kenny Wallace and the Daytona 500. Kenny Wallace has to race his way in. I think we're ready. I really like my car. Green flag, 60 laps. Kenny Wallace in that 09, they are losing touch with the lead pack. You can see the distance and it's growing. You got to stay in the pack. We're done now. What do you think? I just want them to go by me? Not what I'm saying, but you got to stay with them. Do the best you can. Yeah, but the problem is the motor's blowing up. We didn't lose the draft. The motor's blowing up. Car is almost wanting to die. That's four. We got a fuel pressure issue. Hitting this time. Hitting this time. Four. Two, one, wheel straight, put on the brake, get the trunk open, getting tapped. And Kenny Wallace sees his chances to make the Daytona 500 getting smaller. This is what I feared the whole time. But you know, look, I did the best I could do. All right, check it back there. Guys, let's try to uh, figure out what went wrong there. Thanks for your effort. Thank you for all the work you did. I know how hard y'all work. Thank you. When you put yourself out there like I do, you set yourself up for success or failure. We just didn't do our job. Luck wasn't on our side. Uh, it's a bummer, but all in all, you know, uh, we were in contention. At least I was here. I was inside the ring. Some people don't even get inside the ring, and I was inside the ring, and I tried. I don't know if it was failure. I just know that it didn't turn out the way I wanted it to. So heartbreak for Kenny Wallace, which I'm sure is no easier this morning. But Kenny, you told me before your dual race that you knew you were going to have to race your way in, but you did not expect for it to end that way. What happened? No, well, first of all, I don't expect any gifts. I'm a hardcore boy out of St. Louis, and we're rough and tough, but uh, we'll move on today. You know, uh, what happened was something very unique. You know, the new electronic fuel ignition is new. And why me? I don't care. I'm not going to complain or cry, me, me. But I just got on my phone this morning, Triad Motors just sent me a confirmation that I've been the very first driver to have computer software issues. Now, I'm not, uh, I'm not really up on the EFI deal, but Larry McReynolds, what does that mean, computer software <laughs> issues? Once again, my motor builder, Triad Motors, just called me this morning, texted me on my Sprint phone. What does that mean? Well, electronic fuel injection, even though NASCAR, the teams, the engine guys, they've been working on it for a couple of years. They have tested, tested, and tested. There's a lot of working parts and pieces, and there's an electronic control unit box that has electronics in it. It's exactly what it says. And even though we've been pretty much trouble-free, 
there's a lot of unknowns. I think that's one reason we've seen so many drivers during speed weeks running lap after lap after lap. A lot of times just out there by themselves, coming down pit road, making pit stops, just trying to gather as much information as possible. We're continuing to learn. I think it's still going to be a great thing for our sport. But I want to say this about this man right here. Did you hear what he said? I'm just proud to be in the circle. Nobody has a better attitude than this guy right here, Kenny yep. Wallace. Now, Kenny, I know you're rough and tough. I get that, but what, do you know what it's gonna feel like when they throw that green flag at 129 and you're not in the show? You're gonna feel like crap, you know? <laughs> because here, here's the deal. You know, like y'all said, I'm in the ring I'm doing. You know, Smokey Eunuch once told me this. You have to decide what side of that concrete you wanna be on. That wall, that pit wall is one foot wide. Do you want to be a crew member? Do you want to be on this side? Or do you want to be on that side? I want to be on the race car driver's side. And when you do that, you set yourself up for devastating times. Listen, you lose way more than you win. But I'm in the ring. I'm fighting the fight. It, it, it hurts bad right now. But you know what? These guys are setting great examples. I love being up here with you all, and I've got to move on because I'm a race car driver. <laughs> Kenny Wallace, race car driver. It's time for some Napa know-how. Kenny Wallace, not the only driver not making the 54th Daytona 500. Robert Richardson, Mike Wallace, Michael Waltrip, J.J. Yaley, and Bill Elliott also not making the field. Now, those that did either race their way in or use the benefit of a fast speed. Robbie Gordon, Trevor Bain, Tony Raines, David Stremme, Terry Labonte, Dave Blaney, Joe Nemechek, and Michael McDowell.